Yay, so summer has officially arrived. Now, as the mother of five, I know how incredibly awesome it is when summer comes, but also how incredibly exhausting and pressure filled summer can be. And I also remember what those August, September months looked like after a busy, crazy summer. And that's why at this point, I want to share my five best habits for a happy summer that will leave you feeling refreshed instead of burnt out. Now, listen, if you are not sure what I'm talking about, think back to last August, September, maybe scroll back in your social media feed and take a look at how you were feeling, how overwhelmed and stressed out you were as the summer was coming to an end and as you were getting ready for school to start again. And I want you to remember that feeling. And I want you to be mindful of the fact that you don't have to have that feeling at the end of the summer. At the end of the summer, it should feel good. It should have been a fun summer with your family, but you also want to feel refreshed. And this goes for working moms or stay-at-home moms, whichever you do. Because the truth is summer comes with a lot of pressure, a lot of activity, a lot of needing to keep the kids occupied, wanting to make the most out of summer. And I get it. And we tend to start off really strong in the summer. It's almost like New Year's all over again. And then we just start to feel irritable and exhausted and overwhelmed. And by the end of the summer, it's like we're barely holding on. So here are my five habits for summer that if you stick to them, you will have a much better, easier time. Number one is get outside. This goes for you and for the kids. It's really important to spend time outside. It's important to get that vitamin D, but it's also important to get that fresh air while you can. Now, if you happen to live in a climate where it's unbearably hot in the summer, I have some people I love who live in Phoenix you might actually want to take some of these tips and apply them at a different time of year when it's a little bit easier to get outside. But if you're going to be spending out time outside, make a habit of doing it and determine the time of day that works best for you. Perhaps if you're in one of those hotter climates, you want to do it in the evening or in the early morning. Whereas if you're in a state like Michigan, where I'm from, you can pretty much go out any time of day and enjoy, enjoy some outdoor time. Let your kids play outside uninterrupted. Get a slip and slide or an old fashioned sprinkler. Maybe play with some water balloons. By the way, pro tip, make it a game like a challenge to pick up all those balloon pieces to keep the animals safe and have a great time. It's also a really awesome thing to do for your health to start a garden. And kids are more likely to eat things that they themselves have grown. So get the whole family in involved and get a garden growing. You will be so incredibly glad you did. And for those of you who are wondering when you're seeing this, if it's too late, no, it is not. You might need to start with some starter plants instead of some seeds, but you can still plant. And again, here in Michigan, we have had a heck of a time with hard frost in May this year. So um, everybody's getting a little bit of a later start. You won't even be that far behind. Number two is to open your windows. Get some of that outside air in. It really does change things and it really helps. This can be particularly helpful at nighttime when the sun's not beating down. I know a lot of times in the summer to keep our air conditioning costs lower, we keep our drapes closed even so that we can kind of hold that cool air in. Um, but at night, we like to open the windows and get some ventilation. That fresh air is really, really important for your health. And I know some of you probably are thinking about illnesses and germs. And sure, airing out the house is a great idea for that. But one of the biggest and most important reasons to open your windows in the summer is because of all of the air pollution in your house. You would be surprised at the amount of air pollution and the poor air quality indoors because of all of the artificial fragrances in our products, in our laundry soaps, things like that. But in addition to that, just from dust and dander and skin, and oh, it's so much, it's a lot. And so getting that fresh air in really helps keep your house feeling nice and fresh 
and clean. I love to get those windows open in the evening, get a little cross breeze go going. It took me a while to figure out which doors would close on their own and freak me out. Um, but getting that cross breeze going makes a huge difference. It makes a big difference, to be honest, to everyone's mood also. Number three, speaking of everyone's mood, some of you are going to love this one and some of you not so much. Schedule quiet time into every single day. And what I mean by this is quiet, independent time for everyone in the family. This could be time spent napping, reading a book, even maybe, I know, a little bit of screen time. It's really important for everyone to get a moment to just refresh every single day. A lot of times we get really in our heads about keeping the kids occupied and spending time with them and making the most out of summer and keeping everyone entertained. But I need to just point out for a quick moment here how incredibly important boredom is to the, to the development and health of the human brain. When we're bored, it allows us to develop our creativity skills, to develop our problem solving skills. And this is really, really important for young kids. In addition, you'll find yourself feeling more refreshed. Everyone will be a lot less irritable if you just get in a little bit of quiet time every day. Now for a lot of families, this works best in that nap window if you have younger kids where you have quiet time for everyone in the house because the little ones are napping. Sometimes it can be helpful to schedule it after an event or an outing, meaning you go to the pool, you get home, you get everything unloaded, and everybody has a little bit of quiet time. Or you can even attach this habit to a meal. Like we have quiet time before we get dinner started. Just make sure that during the quiet time, you are also taking quiet time as the parent. This is not an opportunity for the kids to have quiet time so you can make dinner or clean the house. It's really important that you get that downtime every single day too. And four is eat local. Make a habit of getting yourself to a farmer's market or join a CSA and eat some local produce. I have to tell you, there is, there are very few things that are better for your body than local produce. It's better for the environment. It's better for your health. It is better for your community and for the economy of your community. And it's really important when um, we have kids that our kids understand where food comes from, right? It doesn't just come from the supermarket. And being able to actually go to a farmer's market, meet people who grow food, get your food from a CSA so that you are eating seasonal foods really matters. They're more nutrient dense. They're better for your body. There are just so many reasons to do this. This can be a weekly habit. So get that happening in your life. You will be really glad that you did. It'll give your kids the opportunity to try a whole lot of things and you the opportunity to try a whole lot of things that you may never have tried before. Now, if you need a little bit of support with this, I completely understand because it can be difficult to eat produce that you're really not familiar with. So you can check out my um, blog post that is called um, You Need to Eat More Veggies. And it goes through all the different veggies and the variety of things you may find in your CSA box or at the farmer's market and how to prepare them and kind of what they go with and what they taste like so that you know. In addition, you can check out my post about things to ask at the farmer's market and you can teach your kids about some of the things that they may wanna know about their food, where it comes from, how it's grown. This really matters. I cannot tell you how much this matters. This really matters and it will help them strive for lifelong health and a healthy relationship with food, which I know is so important to me and to so many of you that our children grow up having a really healthy relationship with food, that they enjoy um, healthy foods, that they know how to prepare them, that they can nourish their bodies well. And feeding our families, let's face it, is not always the easiest thing, especially in the busy, busy summer months. So really making a point of reconnecting to your nutrition is very helpful and it'll also help you stay on target with any health goals you may have going into the summer and number five is 
to skip something. Okay. Now, the reason why I created number five is because I noticed myself over scheduling in the summer, right? I would schedule so many things to do. I would have so many things on my list. Then I would have all of my regular everyday habits like housekeeping things, health related things, business related things. And I was trying to cram too much in. I think it's really important to be aware that in other cultures and in human history, napping in the afternoon in the summer wasn't just for toddlers. That was actually a pretty common practice and still is in many parts of the world. Rather than going from sun up to sundown, those days are long, y'all. It makes a lot of sense to actually be mindful about how much we put on our plates. Otherwise, we go into the later part of the summer and the early part of the fall exhausted and burnt out. You don't have to do that much. When you're thinking about summer activities and what you want to do this summer and where you want to go and maybe some vacations you might even want to take, what you want to be thinking about is quality over quantity. It's not about the number of things you do. It's about the memories that you're making. It's about the intention and the choice about how you spend your time. Now, we so often think of money as our only resource, but the reality is we have three resources. They are money, time, and energy. And we don't want to deplete our resources to zero or below. I know some of you run on fumes in the summer. So what we really want to do is be mindful of the fact that we're not going to let our schedules this summer become so full and so overwhelming because we're checking off a bucket list that we forget to really enjoy those moments, to really enjoy the simplicity of summer, the simplicity of just being outside on a nature walk, right? The simplicity of snuggling up with our kids and just reading a story on a rainy day. We don't have to be constantly busy. Busyness and productivity are not the keys to success and happiness that people have made them out to be. And your children's summer memories will not be better if you are frazzled and exhausted and they are frazzled and exhausted because of the breakneck pace of summer. So if there's only one of these habits that you do this summer, it is this one. Every week when you look at your plan for the week ahead, or you make your plan for the week ahead, remove something from your plan. Remove something, give yourself that grace, give yourself that space. And by the way, I know what some of you are thinking. Don't remove the quiet time. Remove an activity that requires time, money, or energy in excess of what you have or feel you will have to give. You and your children will both be grateful for that. Don't forget to subscribe for more habits. I will be talking very soon about health habits, money habits, habits in crisis, all of that stuff. So do not forget to subscribe. Also know that you can find all of my content along with additional lessons, courses, community, and book club in Inner Circle. If you haven't checked that out yet, I will go ahead and link it below along with the app for those of you who are interested in that. Remember that we are here to help you upcycle your real life into your best life by creating healthy habits, learning to overcome obstacles, and growing to accomplish your goals. And if your goal this year is to have a fun, refreshing, and amazing summer, simply follow the five habits in this video. Bye everyone.